Another short presentation from PLC E University. What is a PLC? This is the 10th in the Factory Rat series. This one is PLC Data Land. Everything that takes place in a PLC takes place in RAM or in the memory of the PLC. If you have not watched the earlier presentation on ladder logic, you need to go watch that now. This is where we left it in the prior presentation on the relay panel was an array of relays and each relay has a binary state. It's energized or de-energized and these relay panels literally had hundreds of relays and each one of them, remember, represented a binary state of on or off. Connected up to this relay panel through the input device's interface, that yellow column of relays, proximity switches, photoelectric switches, limit switches, and condition switches, which could be pressure, temperature, weight, etc. As well as we had a row of yellow relay motor starters and we solenoid valve. So this is predominantly what you had for inputs and outputs for a PLC. Back to our array of relays. I've increased the array of relay coils. So now I have 16 relays in each column in rows of 16. Coils 0 through 15 in rows 0 through 8,191. I don't think there was ever a relay panel with that many coils. With PLC's memory, we always start with zero. Bit zero, word zero. 8,192 is the number of rows, but remember zero is the first. With relays, each coil had a binary state, and if you wanted to query that binary state, or you wanted to make a logical statement, you could include the top contact, normally open, and that's true if the relay's on, electrically true if the relay's on, and then the one right below it is electrically true if the relay's off. So you could use those contacts to query the state of that coil to know its binary state in a logical statement in your wiring. If you needed more contacts to query that coil, you just added more contacts. With a coil, you had a normally closed and normally open contacts. Those contacts were used in logical statements to say the coil is de-energized or to say the coil is energized. The normally closed contact of a relay has continuity if the coil of that relay is de-energized. Normally closed contact is electrically true if the coil is de-energized. Normally open contact of the relay has continuity if the coil of that relay is energized. So that contact is electrically true if the coil is energized. Now we switch over to a bit in memory. And I have a little circuit there. Notice read-write control. There's in and out. The bit is de-energized. True or false, the bit is energized. This instruction is true if the bit that it addresses in the PLC's memory is de-energized, just like the coil. We queried the coil with that normally closed contact. Now we query the bit in memory with a symbol that looks like a normally closed contact, but we would call that symbol true if off. That symbol is true if the bit memory is off. Likewise, this instruction is true if the bit that it addresses in the PLC's memory is energized or on. We would call that a true if on instruction. Now the original bit in memory, solid state memory, was a bistable multivibrator. If you don't know electronics, no problem. Solid state memory was made up of thousands of these circuits. It had two inputs, set it to one or set it to zero, and there was the output step ahead a little bit and this is the circuit for a modern bit in memory. We're still using the 1766 L32 BXB. Let's take a closer look at the PLC data table. Now I've jumped up here from 8192 which would be 8k to 16k which is 16,384 words in memory over 260,000 bits. So this has the logical equivalent of 262,000 plus relay coils that you can query the state of these bits in memory in your logic. When you create a project with any kind of a, an RSLogix 500 processor, you automatically get something that looks like this. S2 status, one element of B3, T4, C5, R6, and 7. And if the processor supports floating point, then you get one element of a floating point data type. Now these are single element arrays, which means that each one of these files, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, can be expanded to more elements 
elements in the array. So the first word in B3 is B3 colon 0. But you can expand this out to two elements, B3 colon 0 and B3 colon 1 and so on, up to a limit. Typically it's 256 elements of each of these data types. This is the memory that the memory layout that you get by default with a 1766 L32 BXB. Look down at the bottom. That's file 0 right above its file 1, file 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. File 0, because a 0 looks like an O, they associate that with outputs. And this processor, when you create a project, automatically gives you six 16 bit words that are available for output field devices, even though you might only have 12 fixed on the processor it gives you six words. And I abbreviated words one through four just to save space in the graphic. Right above it, the input image gives you eight 16-bit words that are accessible for I.O. And these are fixed and permanent. You can't eliminate them. You get S2 status file and it's fixed at 66 words. You also, by default, get one element of B3, T4, C5, R6, and 7, and F8. For the next thing up in memory will be the program ladder 2 file. You automatically get a ladder 2 program file with nothing in it. And the program will be made up of logical statements that you write that have a true or false state. If the rung is true, then some action takes place. If it's false, in some cases an action takes place, in some cases it does not. Some output instructions have a true and a false execution. Some only have a true execution. All of the activity in a PLC takes place between the CPU and RAM. PLC Datascape. The thing that you will come to understand is all of the logical statements that you write read from those memory locations we just looked at and write to those memory locations we just looked at. The program never reads the inputs or writes to the outputs. Everything takes place in memory.